Who said 3D printing flexibles was hard? Let's print some flexibles really fast. Now I've been printing flexibles for many years, but at the same time, not really at all. Let me explain. 10 years ago, I got this little roll of filler flex and it was ludicrously expensive for about 250 grams. At the time, I had two printing options. My Solid Doodle 2 Pro it was impossible to print with and I gave up. At school, we had a replicated one and that printed, albeit with very slow printing speeds. Given the price and the difficulty, I shelved this and it's been sitting around ever since. So why is it so hard to print flexibles? Well, as the old saying goes, you can't push a rope. What does that mean? Well, as you try and push it from the extruder drive gear into the printer, all it wants to do is buckle. This is commonly seen on many extruders as a bulge that comes near the gear and then extends further and further with nothing coming out the nozzle and a failed print. A little while ago, I started making videos modifying this Cocoon Create Touch. My aim was always to make it a flexible specific machine, so therefore I started with the Flexion extruder. Now the Flexion extruder design has two main features that make it work very well. Firstly, it's got PTF tubes that come up very close to the drive gear on both sides. In fact, they're cut at an angle so it can get as close as possible. Secondly, instead of having a sprung lever, they have a fixed cam, which is adjustable for how much it grips the filament. I use setting three for PLA and ABS, then I twist it down to setting two for TPU, and they're still setting one in case I ever try to print something mega flexible. Setting four, I purposely leave really loose, so I can back that off, hit up the hot end, and pull the filament straight out. Super convenient. So far, I've been super impressed with the ease, speed, and quality of printing with the Flexion extruder. So let's have a look at where I started in setting it up, and then I'll share my settings with you. A minor hiccup was addressing this tiny roll, so I've got this excellent modification on top where I've masking taped a pencil. Crude, but effective. My first print was this humble 25mm test cube, and all I did was turn off the heated bed and lower my speed to half, which is 30mm per second. Partway through the cube, I saw it was printing perfectly, so I used the LCD panel on the front of the printer to override the speed to 200%, 60 millimeters per second. Once again, it was printing trouble-free, so I looked for my next challenge. My next print would be this flexible octopus, which is like the 3D Benji for printing flexibles. I set the slicing speed back to 60 millimeters per second and started the print, but then I heard it sounded a little bit manic. When I looked over, I saw that I still had my manual override of 200% speed applied to the printer, Therefore, this thing was printing at 120 millimeters per second and doing an excellent job at that. Now, of course, I realized with such a small model, it's not actually gonna reach those speeds with such small distances and acceleration. But even so, I was astonished. The good news is that TPU as a filament is much more common these days. So you don't need to spend a lot of money to get very little. In fact, this X3D clear TPU or thermal polyurethane is a lot closer to PLA prices than it's ever been before, especially when you buy three and get the fourth one free. I printed one with the exact same settings and sure enough, it came out perfectly first go. Now this TPU is still flexible, but not as flexible as the first one. And that gives us a chance to explain sure hardness rating. Every material when tested in a lab can have a sure hardness rating determined. The Filiflex is rated at 82A, whereas this one's rated at 95A, which just means it's a little bit stiffer. When you're shopping for your TPU, all you need to know is that the lower the number, the softer it is, and the higher the number, the more rigid it is. So I had it working pretty well and I decided it was time to make something properly. And my job was to replace these horrible feet that you find on these printers. They've got to be one of the most underwhelming parts of this printer. Here's how I designed them in Onshape. So I started in Onshape by sketching the metal frame of the printer using calipers to take the dimensions and then I extruded it to the thickness of two millimeters. I could then sketch around this leaving just a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that it would fit no matter what. And then I took a slightly different tact by extruding the thickness, but only halfway. And then I added on a little bit at the front. And then finally I mirrored it to make the two sides symmetrical. Now this one, if it's flipped, should fit on the opposite side. And the front and back of the printer are the same. And I've measured and everything should clear anything on the printer that could possibly get in the way. So here we are in Simplify 3D. We're gonna set up a profile and it doesn't really matter that I'm in Simplify 3D. These same settings will apply to whatever printer you're using. You can see we have my Cocoon Create Touch profile. I'm gonna start with ABS. I'm gonna create a new profile. I'm gonna call it TPU. And let's get to work. Generally, the rule of thumb is to disable retraction with flexible filaments, but with the Flexion extruder, we don't actually need to worry about that. We can leave it on. 
If you're not printing with a Flexion or another specialist extruder, you might like to untick this to turn it off. Now, like I do with all of my prints, I like to have a nice slow first layer. Tip U is pretty sticky, but slowing it down will just make sure it doesn't distort or rub on the bed. Temperature, now this is where we get to the important ones. The bed must be set to zero. If you set it to something hot, there's a fair chance you'll never get the TPU off. The extruder, we want this fairly hot. So 240 is the limit of the Flexion extruder. So I'm gonna put it on that. The idea is we want the minimum amount of friction possible for the filament. So it goes through into the hot end and is extruded rather than buckling earlier in the system. Okay, finally we get to our speeds. As I showed you in my earlier example, with the Flexion, you don't need to slow down anything at all. So I can actually bump this up a fair amount if I want, but I'm just gonna leave it on this for now. And that's pretty much gonna do it for me. I'm gonna update my profile. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm gonna prepare to print. So my first prototype printed okay, but it was suffering from severe under extrusion. All of the perimeters were separated the whole way down through the model. And this made it quite floppy and not really suitable as a foot for a 3D printer. I turned to the Flexion website and found some handy settings to put into the slicer software. Let me run you through them. A couple of advanced tweaks we need to do is turning up the extrusion multiplier to much more than usual. According to the Flexion website, the filament is squeezed by the extruder, therefore it effectively has a lower diameter and we need to increase this to compensate. Another thing they recommend is putting the extrusion width for manual and decreasing it to be just below the nozzle diameter. So we're going to come to 0.38 here. One other little one is on the infill and it says we need to increase our outline overlap to 75%. So let's slice and redo this version two. And this one we're going to print four and see how they fit. So the reprint went extremely well and all of those layer separation issues were gone. The feet fit perfectly to the printer and have the added bonus being from a flexible material that they're non-marking and they have anti-vibration properties which should only help the print quality. There was only one problem, and that's that separation of the parts from the print surface was still very difficult. So here's one final tweak to fix that. To fix our problem of parts sticking too well, even with the heated bed turned off, we're gonna come up to G-code, and we're going to put in an offset to lift up the print off the bed. Now to compensate for this, because we already have some under extrusion on the bottom of the part, we're gonna come back to layer, and we're really gonna bump up that first layer width and that should help the layers join and make them stronger so they peel off cleanly. Now in Simplify 3D at least, the change that we've made on the G code will not be independently saved for our material. So for this reason, we're gonna save as a new profile. And now all of these changes we've made will be separate to our regular one. So with these updated settings, I did one more long test print to show you some more uses for TPU, as well as verify that the changes had worked. First piece of good news is that the part stuck perfectly during printing, but could be removed without a spatula and had a satisfying peel as they were removed from the build surface. This one on the left was a lot harder to get off, but when you consider how much surface area was there, it's a pretty much a miracle that it would still come off without using something like a spatula. I'd like to note that in my earlier testing that TPU peeled beautifully off glass, but everything I've seen on the internet warns very clearly against printing on PEI. It's said to stick too well and there's a fair chance it's gonna take chunks of the PEI sheet off as you try and remove the prints. So the first print is a phone case and I have to say it's perfect for this application. It's not gonna scratch my phone and it's flexible enough to get on and off without being damaged over time. Now the shore hardness of 95A from the X3D is absolutely perfect for a phone case. It flexes on and off just enough but it's still rigid enough to stay on the phone and not come off by accident. That brings us to this mystery item. Well, I printed this because I wanted to test just how strong TPU is. And I have to say, I'm not disappointed with the results. As you can see, it flexes a fair amount, but it had no trouble holding up my 90 kilograms off the ground. And the best part is after you're done, it doesn't deform permanently and goes back to its original shape. Now, one final tip on stiffness, and that's that you can control this within your slicing software. We might remember the first print I did on the octopus that wasn't particularly flexible. Well, here's one with the same filament. And all I did in this one was turn down the amount of perimeters. The filament sticks really well to each other, so you're not gonna compromise strength. So by changing this up or down, you can change how stiff or flexible your filament is. Try it out. I've really enjoyed modifying this Cocoon Create Touch, and I would consider it almost complete but there is one more significant update to come, and that's the way I've tweaked the BL Touch. In the last video, I got it working as per the firmware's recommendations, but since then, I've improved things a great, great deal. Stay tuned for that, 
And in the meantime, thanks for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.